One of the best things about the shows of the DC Animated Universe is how the writers weren't slaves to everything that had come before them. They simply took inspiration from the comic book source material, dropped all the stuff that didn't work and created excellent new material. I've already uploaded essays looking at Bizarro and Toy Man, two great examples of this from Superman the Animated Series. However, of all the villains in Superman the Animated Series, none were as divergent as Brainiac. The DCAU Brainiac has very little in common with his comic book counterpart and I would argue for good reason. Kicking things off, let's look at the comic book version of Brainiac and his convoluted history. Making his first appearance in 1958's Action Comics 242, we are introduced to the evil genius Brainiac. The name Brainiac is a portmanteau, combining the words brain and maniac, although since then the word has gone on to mean highly intelligent, thanks entirely to this character. The original Brainiac is a green-skinned alien from the planet Kolu named Vril Dox. He has a pet space monkey named Coco for a companion and his aim is to shrink cities and all of the people within them, store them in bottles and use them to repopulate his decimated home planet. Superman crosses paths with Brainiac after he and Lois ride the first manned rocket on its journey to the stars. Their ship narrowly avoids Brainiac's and Brainiac takes this near miss as an act of aggression and retaliates. Superman attempts to stop Brainiac, however he has developed a force field that protects him from all harm, leaving Superman helpless against him. Brainiac responds to this perceived aggression by shrinking several of Earth's cities, London, Paris, Rome and Metropolis putting them in bottles and flying away. Superman, now shrunk down to miniature size, uses his superpowers to escape from the bottled metropolis and discovers a shrunken Kryptonian city, Kandor, in Brainiac's collection. By teaming with the advanced Kryptonian scientists, Superman is able to restore the Earth's cities, but as a consequence, Kandor is stuck at that size forever. Now the first thing that leaps out to me about this early version of Brainiac is that he's virtually no different to other mad scientist villains in Superman's rogues gallery, like Lex Luthor and the Ultra Humanite. Despite being from another planet and having a slightly different gimmick, Brainiac essentially is another bald genius. If it wasn't for his green skin and impossibly short shorts, he'd be indistinguishable from the other villains. In many ways, Brainiac was the perfect villain for the more light-hearted sci-fi adventure comics of the 1950s. He's a space alien with a kooky pet monkey, a strange outfit, green skin and a flying saucer. But ultimately he was pretty samey, always resorting to shrinking things. In the making of Batman the Animated Series documentary The Heart of Batman, writer-producer Alan Burnett talked about his time working on the Super Friends cartoon and how whenever he ran out of ideas he would resort to shrinking the heroes because it's fairly easy to tell stories about heroes being overpowered by regular sized things like house spiders. To Burnett, shrinking was a lazy trope that would help them churn out a script. And I kind of feel the same was true of Brainiac. Need to put out a story this month? Bring in Brainiac, have him shrink someone or something and the rest of the story will practically write itself. Another issue with Brainiac was his appearance. As I said, he's essentially a recolored version of Lex Luthor, as was made abundantly clear during their first team up. To avoid confusion about their appearances, Brainiac was given a slight visual overhaul with visible electrical terminals in his skull. It was also revealed that Brainiac was secretly an advanced android created by the artificial intelligence that had ruled Kolu, whose intelligence was enhanced to the 12th level and was sent out to spy on human controlled worlds. Much later in 1983's Action Comics 544, Brainiac underwent a significant change once more. In order to escape from a prison planet, Brainiac's consciousness was digitized and was transferred over to a new overtly mechanical body that resembled a skeleton. This new Brainiac was more ruthless, flying an ominous skull-shaped ship with tendrils that it would use to enslave the population of unsuspecting planets. Brainiac had become a conqueror of worlds. Following Crisis on Infinite Earths, where much of DC's continuity was rewritten, Brainiac was once again the colon scientist Vril Dox. But he had lost his physical form when demonstrating a new experimental teleportation technology that had been sabotaged by the artificial intelligence that ruled Kolu. Brainiac's consciousness was drawn to Earth and the mind of a circus mentalist named Milton Fine, who performed under the stage name of Brainiac and possessed latent psychic powers. After taking over Fine's body, Brainiac would undergo a procedure to alter his body, turning it into a more suitable receptacle for Brainiac, again with green skin and enhanced psychic powers. 
So all in all, Brainiac went through a variety of revisions over the decades, and honestly, I don't think that any of them were actually particularly good. When it came time for the development of Superman the Animated Series to begin, you can likely understand why their version of Brainiac was significantly different from the comic book version. The biggest change to the Estas version of Brainiac is that he was the centralised artificial intelligence of Krypton. He was responsible for the safety and maintenance of their entire civilization. In the first episode, Last Son of Krypton Part 1, Brainiac comes into conflict with Superman's father, Jor-El, who has uncovered evidence that Krypton was close to a catastrophic eruption that would destroy the entire planet. Brainiac assures the Council of Krypton that Jor-El's findings are inaccurate and ostracizes him from the scientific community. What they didn't know is that Brainiac was alarmed by Jor-El's findings and immediately began work on saving himself rather than the population of Krypton. When confronted by Jor-El, Brainiac argues that it's far too late to save the people and that Krypton's knowledge should be preserved above all else. It doesn't matter that Jor-El has a perfectly feasible plan of putting everyone in the Phantom Zone, an extra-dimensional prison for the criminals of Krypton, leaving himself behind to discover a new homeworld and then release everyone there. Brainiac values his own preservation above all else. After all, Brainiac views himself as being the personification of Krypton. He's following his core programming by protecting himself above all others. It's a cold and pragmatic opinion with no emotion, and it really underlines why emotion is such an important part of human decision making. Yes, Brainiac could escape with the knowledge of Krypton's culture, of their music and art for instance, but just because he knows what music and art is, that doesn't mean he could create original art and music of his own. He simply doesn't have the necessary spark. This conflict with Jor-El and his role in the destruction of Krypton makes Brainiac a deeply personal villain for Superman, even if Superman doesn't know it. Superman wouldn't meet Brainiac until the episode Stolen Memories. After the destruction of Krypton, Brainiac uploaded himself to a satellite and was picked up by a curious group of aliens. And we all know the saying about cats and curiosity. Decades later, Brainiac would come to Earth after Lex Luthor intercepted a signal being broadcast across space. In the years between the destruction of Krypton and his appearance on Earth, Brainiac crafted himself a robot body and travelled the universe, taking all of the knowledge from any civilizations he came across before destroying them, and not a single shrink ray in sight. Instead, he would digitise them. Brainiac argues that knowledge is power, and the most surefire way of increasing the potency of knowledge is to limit the number of people that possess the knowledge. It's a cold, logical argument, and I think it's pretty easy to argue against. Brainiac may argue that preserving Krypton's knowledge and culture was more important than saving the people, but people are what defines a culture. Without people, knowledge is just cold, hard facts and ultimately meaningless. Knowledge that is not shared becomes a secret, and secrets are nothing but trouble. When Brainiac meets Superman for the first time, he actually seems quite pleased to meet a fellow Kryptonian. Perhaps he feels nostalgia for his old way of life? I guess Brainiac doesn't feel threatened by Superman because he has no knowledge of Krypton, and the knowledge he does have is distributed by Brainiac by interfacing with his orbs. Each orb contains an entire history of a single planet, up until each planet was visited by Brainiac. Given the vast number of orbs in Brainiac's ship, you can tell he's been a very busy little robot over the last 30 or so years. Quite what Brainiac wants with Superman wouldn't be revealed immediately. In the Justice League episode Twilight, Brainiac discloses that he has reached the limit of artificial evolution. In order to take things to the next level, he needs to become organic and he wants Superman to become his vessel. There's so much to say about Brainiac's need to become organic, but it's something I'll have to come back to in another video. Just keep it in mind for the future. Anyway, Brainiac clearly wants to manipulate Superman into assisting him, much in the same way that he had manipulated the Council of Krypton. But Superman can see through Brainiac's deception, just like his father had. Despite having limited interactions with Brainiac's orbs, Superman is able to access the knowledge in his dreams. The technology behind the orb seems to be very similar to the Kryptonian tech that broadcast an artificial version of Jor-El and Krypton into the mind of young Clark Kent, and later Bizarro. It creates a very realistic simulation in the mind, and Superman very clearly feels the loss of each life and planet. They may both be from the planet Krypton, but where Superman feels grief and empathy, Brainiac only feels smug self-satisfaction. I think the most interesting thing about Brainiac is how the loss of Krypton completely warped him. I wouldn't say that he was traumatised, but his subsequent actions indicate that he is damaged. Brainiac was intended to be the artificial intelligence that helped to govern Krypton, but he failed those people 
by acting out of self-preservation. Rather than trying to save as many people as he could in what limited time remained, Brainiac instead ran away to save himself. Now, he would argue that his decision was entirely logical. If the Council knew about the impending destruction, they would demand that Brainiac dedicate his resources to finding a way to save everyone, which was impossible. But he could have thrown his support behind jor plan of sending as many people as possible to the Phantom Zone and releasing them on Earth. Instead, he chose to deceive the people of Krypton and leave them to their fate, perhaps because it wasn't possible to take an artificial intelligence into the Phantom Zone. Following Krypton's destruction, Brainiac would intentionally reenact the disaster with every society he encountered on his travels, all in the name of justifying his terrible actions. In a way, this does resemble a human response to trauma. Studies show that those that have been abused can gravitate towards replicating the traumatic experiences, especially if the abuse took place in their childhood. As an artificial being, I'm not entirely certain that Brainiac can become traumatized, but it's clear that the destruction of Krypton caused a major change in Brainiac's behavior. Brainiac would be destroyed towards the end of Stolen Memories, along with all of his orbs, bar the orb of Krypton, and I really hope Brainiac backed everything up into the cloud. But as a digital being, Brainiac is much harder to kill than an organic life form. As we see in the episode Ghost in the Machine, Brainiac's consciousness was uploaded to Lex Luthor's network. Brainiac kidnaps Lex Luthor and forces him to build a new body for him. To prevent anyone from coming looking for Luthor, Brainiac uses an early version of a deep fake video, claiming that he's too busy to be disturbed. While it wasn't clear at the time, this episode would go on to be incredibly significant to the overarching storyline in the first season of Justice League Unlimited. In this scene, where Brainiac shoots Lex Luthor with a beam, it doesn't seem to harm Luthor that much. Instead, Brainiac embeds his code within Luthor, effectively turning him into a hard drive. This wouldn't be revealed for years until the Justice League Unlimited episode Panic in the Sky, when Brainiac reveals himself as the figure behind Project Cadmus. Speaking of the Justice League, Brainiac is one of the few villains to feature in a number of crossover episodes with other heroes. For instance, in the Estas episode Nighttime, Brainiac takes control of Bruce Wayne, not realizing that he's Batman, which draws the attention of Superman. Brainiac's plan is to use Wayne Aerospace to build a rocket to allow him to finally escape Earth, but Superman had something to say about that. Likewise, Brainiac would appear in Static Shock in the two-parter A League of Their Own, where Brainiac possesses Static's friend Richie, also known as Gear. What is it about Brainiac and taking control of smart people? I feel like there's like a coded message there, but I'm not entirely clear what it is. Almost every Brainiac story culminates in his destruction, but he always comes back. So long as there is even the smallest fragment of him left, Brainiac will live on. Even when his demise seems quite definitive in the final season of Justice League, when his skull-shaped asteroid base is obliterated, and the final season of Justice League Unlimited when Lex Luthor's attempts to revive Brainiac are unsuccessful, Brainiac endures. In the Estas episode New Kids in Town, we see that Brainiac is still running around in the 30th century and takes a page out of the Terminator's playbook by traveling back in time to Superman's boyhood in Smallville, although quite why he didn't target Superman when he was a baby is beyond me. Brainiac plots to murder the young Clark Kent before his powers properly develop, but is thwarted by the Legion of Superheroes. The Legion includes among its members Brainiac 5, a biological descendant of the original Kryptonian AI. While the episode ends with Brainiac's body being flung into the sun, you can guarantee that wouldn't be the last we'd see of him. The Estas version of Brainiac is arguably one of Superman's most significant foes and perfectly demonstrates the talent of the DCAU creative teams. Brainiac has come such a long way from that original version of the character, a green-skinned cookie-cutter evil genius in a flying saucer obsessed with collecting cities, to a destroyer of worlds that was indirectly involved in Superman's origins. In my opinion, the Estas version of Brainiac is the definitive Brainiac and one of Superman's greatest villains. Okay, that's it for this week's essay. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, tell all your friends about me. You know how YouTube works. If you really enjoyed the video and have the means, please consider making use of the thanks button to send a buck or two my way because every little helps. I offer channel memberships for $1.99 a month. This will get you early access to my weekly video essay, priority responses to your comments, members only videos, custom emojis, and an icon on your profile indicating that you're one of my people. Next week, I'll be following up on a recent poll on my community section about which Batman Beyond villain you'd like me to talk about next. About 20,000 of you voted, which blows my mind, quite frankly. But the clear winner was Melanie Walker, 10 of the Royal Flush Gang. Hope to see you then.